Okay, so this looks like it's working again. Very good. Uh, so, welcome to Friday Spry Play again. Uh, this one we're just going to be taking a quick look at uh, a Gantt chart uh, feature, which is the ability to use the results and, in particular, uh, check to make sure that it to basically to use two different rows to see if you're hitting a target. So, just updating this as I've been playing around in the background. So, uh, I'm just going to focus on uh, these two rows here. So basically what you can see here is I've got a 3.2 uh, megaton target uh, and I've got one section where I do hit the target and one where I don't. And you can see that in the year that I don't hit my target, I leave a blank space. And in the year that I do hit my target, it's filled in uh, with the uh, quantity that I went to or over. So this is something that just helps you draw attention to, uh, if you wanted to in particular, you could use um, colors or, or alternative uh, information to help figure out um, whether or not you should draw attention to these targets. But I'm just gonna show you the basics of how you do it. So in the settings for this Gantt chart, uh, I have a few things. So I'm just gonna pull it up here so you can see the, those settings and what they mean. So. If you're wondering, those two little red lines there are just empty lines uh, with some color set on them. So just separators between targets being hit, uh, the target component or the, the coal tons component, uh, and then the um, uh, the free dig and, and dozer waste components. So in the target options, which is the, the key ones here, firstly, we're reporting level by year, uh, a couple of different heights there to make one stand out and the other one not stand out. The really key components here are the value expressions. So the, the filters are filtered to coal, um, but then in the value expression, uh, we've actually got a, a date-based one that the simplest one that you can actually do looks a little bit more like this. So that's actually the, the, the real trick to it. So basically you're saying if the sum is of the source quantity is greater than 30 uh, 3.2 million. Now, I don't actually recommend using source quantity. This is a um, part of a, a longer Gantt course that I've been figuring out. Um, I would actually strongly prefer that you use custom fields. Source quantity, I, I generally rail against. This is good for a quick example. You're better off having a, uh, a custom field for, in this example, for coal tons or ore tons or um, the, the value that you're interested in. Source quantity is just a, a little bit dangerous because if you change it to mean something else, um, you have to then remember to go and update all of your uh, different results as opposed to updating just a custom field. So this is the, the simple version, which is just, if it's greater than this, give me the source quantity, otherwise zero. And then the flip side of that on the one underneath. So this one says greater than or equal to the target. So if it's greater than or equal to the target, give me that value. Otherwise, write the number zero. And the op opposite is true. So if it's less than that number, give me the source quantity, otherwise give me zero. So it's the difference between less than and greater than. Um, now, the reason why I had it written with the extra, uh, extra options here, which I'll just go and fill back in, uh, is so that you can have different targets for different years. So you may have uh, you know, a target for year one, year two, year three, year four. Uh, so if you use a system like this, then what you can do is run a nested series of if statements. So what that looks like is something like this. So make this a little wider. So if the end date is less than this one, so basically anything in the first year, now you might want to do a between with your dates instead. Um, so if you want to do between end date, I like to use the hash system for dates. So 1-1-2019 one, one, and 1-1-2020. One, one, uh, I even actually, for what it's worth, prefer to do the month with a few uh, letters just so that it's really clear depending on which time zone that you're in. So if your end date is between these two dates, uh, not February, sorry, January should be, uh, then give me, and, and the source quantity is less than this, and then what you do is you just take that line and you just continue to plug in different dates here. So you can have a different target for 2021 different target for 2022. Unfortunately, this is the neatest way to do it. Um, we're, 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 we're making use of the flexibility of Spry here, but there's not necessarily, um, you know, a, a neat way to 
track or to, to, to link this to a calendar or to link this to something else. You have to manage this manually. Um, but now what we've got uh, basically is an if statement here with a condition and then a, uh, the, the, the value of true and then another condition, value of true, and then with any nested if statement like this or with any multi-statement if statement, you have the final one. So basically, if none of these conditions get met, then you have like a final target. And you may not want a target, you can put anything you like in there. So this one just says for 2019, it's 3.2, 2020, it's 3.5, 2021, it's 3.8. And we make that slight change. You will need to duplicate that uh, in between the two. And as I said, the basic difference here is just that you move from a less than uh, sorry, from a greater than or equal to to a less than. And uh, that is going to be the end of my video because I have a meeting. I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, contact support. Otherwise, have a